Hello my friends, hello, it's Matthew Street. Welcome to my channel. As always, I truly appreciate you being here. And folks, time for another video. Welcome, welcome. And folks, disclaimer, disclaimer right before I start this video because I know I'm gonna get complaints and snarky comments. Folks, I am not here to make fun of or slam Paul McCartney. I am not, folks. I am absolutely not. You know I love Paul McCartney. You know how much I love him. If you've been around my channel since early 2017 when I joined YouTube as Matthew Street, you will know that I love Paul. I have reviewed many of his albums, many of his brand new albums as they came out, and you know I always give Paul the thumbs up. I always try to give a high five to Paul and do the right thing by Paul because I love him. He's 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 right now currently my favorite Beatle of all time. When the Beatles were the Beatles, it was John, and later it was George, and then Ringo for like a nanosecond. But Paul, as far as what he's done over his career, is my favorite Beatle. Now, you know I love the Beatles. I'm a Beatles-centric channel. So folks, I, I hate to even have to make this disclaimer, but I'm not here to make fun or, or pick on Paul, okay? But let's be honest. As a Paul and Beatle fanatic, especially a Paul fanatic, as many of us are, we love Paul. We're biased. We are biased towards Paul. It's a fact. You can't dispute that, folks. There's no fan who is as big a McCartney maniac as I am, and many of you are, admit it. Be honest with yourself, because I'm honest with myself. I, I'm biased towards Paul, okay? I love Paul. He's one of my musical idols. You know, he's right up there. So naturally, when Paul puts out new music or he does something, I always tend to lean towards the favorability factor towards Paul, that what he's doing is good, is right, that his music is good. I find positivity. Even, even when it, it may not be the greatest thing, I still try to find something positive. Let, admit it. That's the way we all are. But if you can't admit that, then you're in denial. You need to get help because... You should be able to admit that, yeah, I love Paul, so yeah, I can be biased towards what he does and what he releases in his music. It's just a fact, okay? I admit it. We love Paul. I mean, he's almost 82 years old now, and everything he releases, we virtually, I think back on myself, it's hard for me to be neutral on it because I always find a way to love everything, as I'm sure you do. And I know this because I do it all the time with Paul and what he releases, whether it be whatever type of media it is or whatever he does, I always try to find the positive, the silver lining to what Paul is doing. And I, I speak favorably of it to others. I mean, that's what I do. So in this series, this is episode one in a series. Now, when I say it's a series, I'm only going to be doing this once in a while because it requires the usage of other people to help me in this series. So... It's only going to be once in a while when I can get some people together to help me do it. But this is my first episode of this. It's a new series. I'm going to be calling it Paul McCartney, The Truth. And I'm going to be having like episode one. But this is episode one. And I'm basically going to take a Paul album that... It's been, it could be an earlier album or it could be a later period or mid-period Paul solo album. And I'm basically going to revisit it. An album that may or may not have aged well for you or me or whatever. It's just an album that's out there. Uh, we may not listen to it all the time, but it needs to be reevaluated. It needs to be looked at with fresh eyes, with neutral, non-biased eyes. Is it a great album? Is it a classic, an all-time classic? Is it mediocre? Does it suck? Okay? We have to be honest with ourselves, folks. And we can't do it because we're too close to Paul in the situation. So, basically, these are albums that I know I've, in the past I've loved them and I've raved about them. <laughs> and I know you're saying, Matt, get to it, get to it. I know, but I'm gonna be supplemented by some neutral listeners. These are people who have no vested interest in Paul. They're millennials, they're Gen Xers. They know who Paul is. They may like or dislike some or all of his music. But basically, he's just another classic rock artist to them. They have no vested interest in elevating Paul to the deity status as we do. Okay, we have Paul up here near, you know, near deity, you know, near a god-like 
musical status. Well, they don't. They just look at Paul as, oh, he's great. He's achieves a lot of great things musically, but they look at him as like, they look like Steve Winwood or Bruce Springsteen or, or uh, any other classic artist you can think of, a Pete Townsend or Brian Wilson. You know, he's just another great classic artist from that era. That's the way they look at it. And basically, they have the ability to listen to a piece of music by Paul and be totally neutral and honest about it. Non-biased, either way, good or bad. So I hope you enjoy this, and so let's go. And I'm sorry for that long, you know, six-minute intro, whatever the hell it is, but let's go. Episode one will be Egypt Station. Yes, Egypt Station released on September 7th of 2018. Wow. Almost six years ago. Can you believe it, folks? And Egypt Station, it was Paul's first number one since Tug of War. And I think his first to go straight to number one. But let's be honest about that. That was kind of a marketing push, all right? Because you look at some of Paul's number one albums, and especially the last one before Egypt Station, Tug of War. Even I have to be honest and say, did Egypt Station really deserve that type of accolade, you know, to be the go right to number one and be his first number one since Tug of War? No, let's be honest, because I love New much better than Egypt Station. That should have been number one, okay? Chaos and Creation in the Backyard, to me, should have been number one. Even Memory Almost Full as an album I love should have been number one. So, you know, Egypt Station was a big marketing machine. Let's be honest. Let's go back to 2018. A lot of push for Egypt Station by Paul, okay? Enough said about that. So, at the time in 2018, I was fairly new to the channel here, and I gave it a pretty favorable review. I mean, I liked the opening tracks, the opening station, then Station 2 later. I thought they were nice little bookends to it. I liked I Don't Know, Come On To Me, Happy With You, Who Cares, I liked Confidant, Dominoes. Uh, the Hunt You Down, Naked Sea Link was a real favorite of mine. I really loved that one. So, you know, there was seven that I really liked right off the bat, plus the two station pieces. It was a 16-track album, but the two station, really a 14-track album, if you want to count Hunt You Down, Naked Sea Link as one track. And then the tracks I was, you know, thought were pretty good were like Caesar Rock was okay to me. I had nothing against Caesar Rock. I, that was kind of in the middle somewhere for me. I, good, pretty good song. And then the ones I was kind of like, ah, okay, were like, fa you, people want peace, hand in hand, back in Brazil, do it now, and despite repeated warnings. But at the time in 2018, if you go back to my review, it's still up there, I still found a way to spin it positive. I did. Because it's Paul, and I'm biased, and I like him. So I gave it a positive spin. One thing I will say, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it in that initial video, because I don't know if it was out yet, but the Explorers edition, okay? We have the regular Egypt Station edition right here. All right? But this one right here, the Explorers edition. Now, this one floated my boat a little more than this one. I mean, I hated the cover on this one, too. Uh, can anyone say Gone Tropo Light? <laughs> not good. All right? But I like this one. Because this one had Get Started on it, Nothing for Free, Frank Sinatra's Party, 62nd Street, Get Enough. And if you take some of those, those five tracks, even four of those tracks, and replace them with the four crappier ones on here that I was like, eh, met on, like, fuh you, etc., this would have been a much better album. I'm sorry. Those additional tracks on the Explorers edition, replace some on here maybe close to being a classic Paul album in the sense that like new or chaos was for me. So anyway, folks, so that's what I did. Let me get that out of the way now. So what I did is I went to two people. I tried to get more, but I got two very neutral people. One is an 80s born person, so I would consider a millennial. And then we have a 90s born person. So that I would consider it on the border of millennial to gen, uh, what is it, gen Z? I don't know, how that you know what I'm saying. They're younger people, they're neutral, they know who Paul is, they know who the Beatles are, they like both of them, Paul and the Beatles, but they're neutral. They, uh, Paul's no better to them than Tom Petty, Bruce Springsteen, Bob Dylan, you know, he's just Paul. He's just another classic artist. So I'm going to read, I'm going to change my Matthew Street glasses to the, shamefully, because I'm so old, the Matthew Street cheater glasses here so I can read better. And I'm going to read both of their statements. I sent out Egypt Station to them. I said, please listen to it intently. 
Give me your overall thoughts on this album being neutral. What do you think of this Paul McCartney album they had never really gotten into before? So I'm going to start with the um, definite millennial who was born in the 80s. I'm going to read each of these to you, and that will be it. I'll be out of here, folks, I promise. First, he wrote to me, I'm a pure prime millennial. I actually finished listening to it this morning. I'm not a big solo Beatles guy to begin with. I've listened to the 70s classics, but I don't go much beyond that. So this was interesting, listening to Egypt Station. I don't mind the sound or the production of it. Some of it was really cool. Lyrics were really generic. You can guess the lines before they even came. I don't like when old Paul does sexual innuendo. So I didn't like Fa You or Come On To Me. I like the slower, reflective stuff on this album a bit, like Confidant and Hand In Hand. But yeah, there's a lot of clunkers on here. Back in Brazil sounded like a mess. People Want Peace reminded me of Freedom from 2001. So I guess that's a negative. <laughs> Just cause it seemed like he wrote the lyrics in five minutes and didn't try to make it better. Anyway, sorry to be critical, but man, this was a tough one. All right. Now the person born in the 90s. My overall experience with this was that most of the songs lost me after about a minute or so. It was tough to force myself to listen all the way through. I think that mostly came down to the lyrics. Pretty surface for the most part. And if they do get better, I probably bailed on the song before he got into, the, got into it. Ha ha. In other words, don't bore us. Get to the chorus, as they say. Funny enough, the song I enjoyed the most was the last one, Hunt You Down. It's sonically cool and it's punchy. After that, I'd say number two is Come On To Me, just because it has got a little more bombast and swagger to it. Fa You is basically Paul's shitty attempt at writing a Taylor Swift song. Parentheses, go listen to me. Ha ha. Also, there's a weird factor of an older dude making naughty wordplay. Interesting to go back and listen to this, but I know there are better, more recent Paul solo albums. I'm leaving this one behind. So folks, there you have it from two totally neutral parties, Gen X, borderline Gen, uh, X, X, uh, Gen Z, Gen Millennial, and a Millennial. And as you can see, you know, as true fans, we're kind of biased because I don't remember anyone doing any kind of review like that, like those two young guys there. I, I don't remember that. I and mean, that's a fact. I don't remember anyone making a review like that, being totally honest and upfront. Now, that doesn't mean Paul is bad. I'm not slamming him here. But the average music fan, especially a fan who's not a classic rock old geezer like we are, all right, younger people... Music fans out there, today fans, millennials, Gen Xers, and whatnot, they're not predisposed to worship Paul. You know, they're not predisposed like many of us do to, oh, St. Paul, everything he does is great. You know, they have no dog in the fight. You know, they listen, and they form an opinion on it, an honest opinion, and I believe they, more than we, the Paul maniacs, I believe they speak the truth. Egypt Station is probably at best, with the average music fan out there, a C album, a fair Paul album. That's it, folks. Uh, just a little series I might be doing now and again. If you have any suggestions for another Paul album you'd like me to do next with the Gen Z, uh, not the Gen Z, Gen X, <laughs> Millennials, and myself, and to really give it an honest evaluation, um, please put it in the comments because maybe I'll pick yours as the next one I do when I can reach out to some more of these younger people to help me be honest and unbiased and fair. And I still love Paul, and I still love Egypt Station. The Explorer Edition, I love the Explorer Edition because there's a lot of good stuff on here that I love, especially with those extra tracks. So, Paul, people, that's it. I love you all. 15 minutes, I'm out of here. Matthew Street signing off. Bye-bye.